Hey everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today is day two of the Summer of Paintings project. This week, our theme is focusing on working from iPhone photos of my two girls. Yesterday, I did a painting of my daughter Agnes, did a painting of her hands in this really intense colored light. Today, it's gonna change focus, not so much on colored light, just more straight natural light. And I would say more on cropping. I'm really excited to do this painting. I don't think I've ever made a painting like this one before. So we'll see what happens. If you're enjoying the content of these videos and you want to support this project, please consider clicking the link in the description and head on over to my website and you'll see the paintings from this project for sale. This project is totally funded through the sale of these paintings. So if you can support us in that way, that would be fantastic. If not, these videos are always going to be 100% free with no advertisements. So let's get into today's painting. Let's paint. All right, so we are on day two. And this painting, again, is another painting from iPhone Photos. This photo is from, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago or something. It was us up at Bedford Springs Resort in Pennsylvania, if you haven't heard of it. It's a historic resort that a lot of presidents have stayed at. And it's a really beautiful place. There's these natural springs all surrounding this resort. The resort itself, the building is just gorgeous. It reminds me of the resort that is up on Mackinac Island. I'm from the Midwest originally. We live in Baltimore City now, have been in Baltimore for eight years, seven, eight years now. Yeah, eight years. We moved here in 2012 and it is 2020. So that's, that's eight years. Yeah, so we've been here for eight years, but in the Midwest, there's a really beautiful resort on Mackinac Island that has the same kind of vibe of sprawling, large, this large building, columns all down the front of it, balconies, and just classic kind of resort. So anyways, uh, I'm derailing. Uh, this, this photo comes from that trip. Agnes was on a bed that had all these just uh, nice white sheets, just clean looking bed. And I woke up on maybe the first or second night we were there and just saw Agnes laying there. And her legs, they just looked, they looked like they were already in a painting. So I just took a photo of her laying on the bed and I don't know what it was. Something was, you know, when you see something, you know, it just starts to click in your mind and you're like, oh, that just, that looks like something I've seen before. And I actually couldn't even put a finger on it when I was making this painting. I was like, I know, I know that this is coming out of my subconscious mind somewhere. It's referencing some paintings. And I think uh, it's, it's actually referencing a bunch of random just art historical things. The first reference that I think really came to my mind with some of Manet's paintings. Um, actually, <laughs> kind of morbid, sorry, but uh, the dead Toreador, the, or the dead man, the, the painting that's at the National Gallery in DC, Manet's painting, this sort of painting where, where the pose of the legs and the body just laying on the floor says a lot about the content. <laughs> so this image of my daughter... <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is making me think of Manet's paintings of these people posing as dead bullfighters. I don't know why, but that was the first place my mind went. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe someone else can tell me the psychology behind that, why, why my brain is making that connection. The other ones I would say actually came after I was painting it, and I was like, what is, what is this? What is it about this painting that is... Uh, also feeling familiar. And I think it's uh, Joaquin Soroya's beach paintings, his paintings of kids and families on the beach in Spain. And they were very sunlit, but there's such an attention in Joaquin Soroya's paintings on the form of the legs and light hitting the legs. And I think the form is even exaggerated in Soroya's paintings because when skin is wet, the highlights are going to punch even harder. It's the same thing as like when bodybuilders oil up, I suppose, you know. 
that the highlights and contrast of the muscle forms get stronger when they're oiled up. So in Soroya's beach paintings, the form of the leg just seems like primary as uh, the content, the subject matter of those paintings. And I realized too, when I was looking at this photo and as I'm painting from this photo and making this little sketch of Agnes's legs, that it was really similar to a lot of poses that were in Walking Soroya's beach paintings. So I've got to say that I've never made a painting that was just focused on legs like this. Usually it's an entire body or an entire figure, or if it's a portion of the figure, typically it's going to be for me, a torso with a head on it, kind of bust up. It feels really different in that I'm focusing in on the legs and seeing what that can do as far as a narrative for a little painting like this. I'm focusing in on the legs in a way that makes the legs kind of tell a story. It feels like a portrait of the legs resting on the sheet. Why are the sheets not on the legs? Was it too hot? Or did somebody already wake up and then they're just laying down again and resting and so the sheets aren't on them? So there's some other possibilities in there too. So at this point in the painting, you'll notice that I'm really just working on establishing the color space of the background. I'm working on the white sheets and really trying to get the color cast of the sheets. The sheets are white, but there are still colors being reflected from the room, colors being reflected off of Agnes's legs even, and throwing little hints of nuanced color onto the white sheets. So for me, I wanted to really establish the white sheets first and then move into the flesh tones so that the flesh tones were being keyed off of the white sheets. When I'm encountering an arrangement of forms and different values or local colors of forms, like a white sheet with flesh tones right next to it, it, for me at least, it makes more sense to start with the lighter colored object so that I don't expend that higher end or the higher key range of my paint. Since paint has a limited gamut of expression and value and in color, you kind of want to get those extremes of the painting in the early. At least I do. I really favor paintings that do that. Some people kind of start with an average of all the mid-tones and then start building contrast out from that, start adding darks and then start adding lights. I do that sometimes, but more often than not, I'll look for the extremes within the composition, like the lightest lights and the darkest darks, the most chromatic moments where there's most saturation. And then I'll work back from those things. Since I know those are going to be the notes that punch hardest in the painting, and I can't get brighter than them, or I can't get more colorful than those notes, I'll start with those and then work backwards from them so that I can sort of maintain a relative structure of value and light from that extreme, or I can maintain a relative structure of chroma and colorfulness, saturation from those extremes. And in this case, if I had started just with the flesh tone, more than likely, I probably would have made the highlights or, or the lights of the flesh brighter than they should have been. And then the sheet itself would have just been all washed out and I wouldn't have had any room with my paint to make the paint any lighter than pure white paint. And it would just look off, I suppose. So that's why I'm working in this order and starting with the sheet and then working into the legs. So yeah, you can also see if I just talk a little bit about how I am staging out painting the legs, you can see that I'm, I'm starting sort of with mid-tones and building again the form through gradient steps. I start with kind of the darker areas, the sides of the form, and then start building those gradients towards the light, the directionality of the light. The light in the scene is really soft. It takes a lot more patience 
and a lot more care to all of the edges and all of those gradient steps to not just get lost in the weeds, but to sort of see the whole effect of the form turning and all these soft transitions and bands of color that correspond to the anatomy of the leg and the forms of the leg. And you also notice too, in the beginning of this painting, I did spend a lot of time carefully measuring out the contours of the legs. And why did I do that? For me, I think one of the main reasons was that these aren't adult legs, they're toddler or, you know, three-year-old legs. So they have different proportions than an adult leg. So if I just kind of go into autopilot of figure painting, figure drawing, I'm going to probably fall into those habits of just, oh, I know how to draw a leg. I can draw a leg from my imagination because I, I know the anatomy of the leg and I know how to build the form of a leg and do it from my imagination. But in this situation, I want to really carefully observe what's different and what makes these legs look like toddler's legs. And what does that do to the narrative of this painting? So a few other paintings were also coming to mind as I was working on this. One of them was Manet's Olympia, mostly just for the, the white sheets and flesh meeting in the composition and creating this sort of block. And then also, along with that, Titian's painting Venus of Urbino. Both of those have that kind of flesh on white sheet composition. This painting, it's definitely not doing that same thing compositionally because this painting, the sheet and the flesh are consuming the majority of the entire painting. But those paintings were still coming into my mind. But then I was also thinking like, there's something about this painting that with the cropping feels less specific. As I was looking at this photo, I was really intrigued by the openness of it. You could interpret this in a bunch of different ways, some really positive and some really negative. The positive one is just the reality of it. Oh, it's just a girl sleeping on a bed, and the forms of her legs and the shapes of her legs mixed with the forms of the fabric make an interesting composition. That's what I was thinking with it. But you could also read it as like the dead Toreador, the dead man painting Manet. Like this could be that kind of an image where you're looking at the legs of someone who died. I think another reason why I was really attracted to this photograph is that it's a really simple composition. You only really have two elements interacting, the legs and then the sheets. And then within that, you have all of these nuances that describe the form, you know, moving and pushing the paint around to create turning edges of the sheets, and then playing with the passages, the tonal passages and temperature passages of the legs to describe the way the leg turns. Besides that, there was only one other little wild card, and that's that just small note of purpley violet color on the pants. And I think that actually is, in this painting, the sort of saving grace that might make the content a little bit more positive. It makes the content aimed at something. You know that it's probably a little girl sleeping. And it saves the painting. Without that little note, this painting is almost too open-ended. So for me, I was really happy to put that little note of magenta in there. This painting feels really different than what we did yesterday. It's a lot less intense of a color space. It's just a really natural color space. And we're having to nuance all the tones that we find just in the natural light and see where that takes us. So that's it. That's the painting for today. Tomorrow, we will continue on with this theme of working from iPhone photos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take it easy. Bye.